What's up guys, Coach Nate here, bringing things indoors for a 15 minute guided full body foam rolling session for runners just like you. Now, this session we are gonna hit our quads, our calves, our hamstrings, our glutes, and that important thoracic spine and that upper back. And we're gonna spend a couple minutes in each place, but by all means, if you need more time in any of those spots, pause this, extend, and then continue. We should also be doing this two days a week. A great foam roller such as this guy from Adaday is perfect. It's small, it's kind of dense, but still a little soft to give to it. It's got some ridges on it to get into those different muscles. Let's get started with our quads. We're gonna get going on our right quad for four minutes. I'm pulling up a little timer, keep myself honest. And we're gonna spend 30 seconds first just working on this main part of our quad here, all the way to the top where our hip flexors are hitting, our rectus femoris, that big beefy guy's in there. And we're gonna work slowly down towards the top of the knee. And you're gonna notice that I'm not just gonna roll north-south for all this rolling, I'm gonna deliberately roll east-west. And I get a little cross friction in there and it's just a nice way to break up any tension, any little muscle knots that are starting to adhere. Once I've hit my 30 seconds, which I have, I'm gonna shift to my vastus lateralis, which is gonna be kind of between the main part of the quad and the IT band. And this is an area where a lot of runners complain about their IT. It's really this muscle that's adhering to the IT band that's causing a lot of issues. So same thing, east, west, back and forth. Finally, once we hit 30 seconds, this is going by real fast, I'm gonna switch all the way to my IT band this way, and I'm just gonna roll on and off, trying to peel that quad off the IT band as much as I can. Sometimes in a tight spot, heel to butt. Going through here. <sighs> Breathing, if you're in a real tight spot and you're tense, try to <sighs> breathe and melt through it. And then finally, for our last 30 seconds, we're gonna hit this inner part of our quad called our VMO. And we're gonna get in here, vastus medialis. And this is an area that sometimes gets really tight when our hips get a little bit loose and we tend to collapse in our stride. It's our adductors, our groin is, is really kind of picking up the slack. So I know this is an area that I have to work on that gets tight, working here through 30 seconds finding those tight spots and going from there. So two minutes flies right by. It, uh, truth be told, I spend a whole lot more time on my quads, but we got a lot of work to do today. So we're just gonna go through fast. Starting over again, two minutes on this side. And we can start to compare, hey, how does this quad feel to the other one? Sometimes we're surprised to feel like we have these little muscle knots tighter than we give ourselves uh, credit for, we even realize that they've just been kind of lurking underneath the surface, switching over to our lateralis, this little outside part of the quad. And a lot of you, if you've ever dealt with a running injury that felt like it came out of nowhere, well, truth be told, if you're on a roller, you may find that that muscle had been tight for a couple weeks prior to that starting to feel like an injury. So that's why it's so important to do this rolling. Whew, it's a little tight spot right there. Finally shifting over to that IT band, back and forth, heel to butt, working our way through. If I'm really tight, I can hold myself up off. If I want, I can sink in a little bit deeper. <sighs> Breathe in. <sighs> Trying to relax. If you're on a real tight spot, just try to sit there and see if you can sink into it a little bit more. That's one of those good times to pause and sit on that spot for 45 seconds or so. Finally switching into the VMO. I like to put this out at a little bit of an angle and then I can kind of roll and hit that inner part of the quad. See how that feels for yourself. Breathe in, back and forth. Every once in a while, if you find a little tight knot, I just like to add a little bit of movement through there. Whew, beautiful. 
got through our quads. Now switching gears to our calves. Now for our calves, we're gonna spend a total of three minutes. It's gonna be 90 seconds per calf. So we'll get started in three, two, one. The, the first 45 seconds, we're really just gonna focus on this lower part of this calf, this soleus and where this Achilles starts to insert right up in here. And we're just gonna roll again east-west. Notice how much I'm moving back and forth this way versus just back and forth this way. What I like to do with the ankle, take my shoes off, and if I find a tight spot is I'm just gonna get some circles. Back and forth, especially if you've got a little tight spot. <sighs> Breathing. Once we've got those 45 seconds, we're gonna move into this upper part of the calf, into this beefier gastroc. You'll notice that your calf, there's a lot going on down there. It's not just one continuous muscle. You got a few different areas to hit. Sometimes this lateral part of the calf can feel a little bit different even than going in here, in this inner part of the calf. Breathing. Get some different spots. 15 more seconds and then we'll go ahead and switch legs. If I want to add a little pressure, I could even lift myself up off a little bit or not too much. I can sit down and relax a little bit. So we'll go ahead and switch legs. Starting low. Three, two, one. Switch in there. Start on this lower part. And again, comparing one side to the other. How does this feel compared to the other side? If you've been newer to running or you've just been picking up um, the pace, you'll notice that it, it takes a little while just for the, the calves, the shins to just get used to that impact and that punishment. And adding a little bit of rolling here, it really helps bring a lot of blood flow to this area and it just helps facilitate a little bit of a faster recovery. So sometimes if you are dealing with pain, it's really good to get on a roller if you can and just hit those legs. It's going to help things faster. Sometimes with injuries, if we just rest and let alone, we'll come back in a couple days and those muscle knots haven't really disappeared. They've just kind of stayed. So now we're going to go more into this upper part of the calf. And I've got a few chunky spots right here where it feels like I'm just sliding over something that's a little bit stiffer. That's a good sign that I'm like, hey, I need to spend a little bit more time on these calves here. Same thing, if I'm on a tight spot, I could just let it sit there. If I need to, I could pause this video and just let that sink in just a little bit more before continuing. Nice work. After this, our calves, we're gonna move further up the chain into our hamstrings. So going back here, we're gonna do again three minutes, so kind of 90 seconds per hamstring. So we'll get started in three, two, one. Hitting our timer. And I like to cross this leg over here just to get a little bit extra weight and really just try to relax. Your hamstring's so briefy that if you just get up on it and you're really tight, your hamstring's strong enough that you won't sink into that foam roller at all. So the goal for you is to really relax in here Kind of work through that kind of north, south, south direction. Finding those tight spots. I like working this lateral part of this hamstring first, this outside part. And again, I could even go almost all the way out to the edge of my, uh, my IT band and see where that's tight. A lot of you guys are going to feel a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing there. And then for the second half of this, we're gonna roll in and work more in the medial, this inner part of our hamstring. And same thing, just north and south. Sometimes, or north and south this way, but then going back into that east-west direction. Whew, so good. Giving our hamstrings the love that they need. Now, for these type of foam rolling sessions, if I've just done a really hard workout or I've just raced, I'm really tight, but I don't want to go that deep yet. It's like I don't want to go for that super hardcore massage because 
my legs or muscles are still really beat up. So it's best, we'll switch legs, to use this on some days where you're, you've only done some lighter workouts, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and pause here and then get started in three, two, one, into this outer part of this hamstring. Kind of hitting this for 45 seconds. Again, always comparing one side to the other. How does this feel? Working our way through. Breathe in. Good job, we're doing great. We've already gotten a few muscles in. Imagine if you did this a couple days a week, how good you'd feel. How much more quickly you'd catch those injuries before they become injuries. That means you can keep training. You can keep going out there, having fun with your friends, hitting your run goals. For so many runners, this is the thing. They just get behind on their self-care and and then the race comes up and then they're just kind of bummed because they, they feel sort of stressed. So now we're gonna move into that inner part of that hamstring, working through different sections of it. And if you're not hanging out on YouTube with, uh, with Coach Nate going through the foam rolling, throw your favorite show on. You know, I like to extend these things to 20 minute sessions or 25 minute sessions, throw something in on Netflix. Netflix and mobilize, you know, make it happen. Going through here for almost done. You guys, we got five minutes left. You're doing so great. We're going to switch gears into our glutes. So three, two, one, we're going to go 90 seconds on this side and then 90 seconds on the other. Now I deliberately like to let this knee kind of drop a little bit. And, and relax. And again, if I'm tight and this knee's up off the ground, muscles on and I can't really sink in or get any benefit from this. So I just want to try to relax as much as I can. Again, kind of moving against the grain north-south a little bit. Find those tight spots. And if I'm on a spot, what I'm going to do is slowly extend this leg and then pull that knee in. Extend, pull that knee in and just hit different spots from some little frog kicks I like to call them. I'm wearing socks on this wood floor here so it's nice and easy to move where it doesn't feel too stuck. And then where I'm going to transition is I'm going to now take this leg, cross it over, and I feel like this can get into more of my piriformis and my glute medius, just some other little micro muscles on the side of your hips where just by adding a little bit tension here I can, I can get in there. Breathe in. This is where these little ridges on the foam roller is just so good. It can hit those spots. And if you're good at the foam roller, you're like, no, Nate, I'm not really feeling that much with this roller. Well, hey, you've graduated to a lacrosse ball or a smaller softball type thing to get deeper into those glutes. So we've got 90 seconds. We'll switch over here. Getting this guy up here. And three, two, one. Going here for our 90 seconds on this side. Again, rolling out. Whew. In those different sections, letting this knee relax as much as you can. Getting a few of those slow frog kicks. If you've been doing double duty in terms of running and then you got to get your kids in the car to school or to soccer practice or you got to go to work and you're sitting right in the office, just our hips, our glutes, our quads get so tight. So it's so good for us to give ourselves a little bit of extra work here. <sighs> Breathing. And then for these final 45 seconds or so, we're going to cross this leg up and over. And then that's just going to change this a little bit. And we're just going to work through some different sections. <sighs> Breathing. Find on those tight spots, see if you can sink in a little bit. I keep saying breathing because it's so important. We, we don't notice that when we get a little tight, we kind of hold our breath or we take little mini sips of air. And, just by changing that, we can relax those shoulders and we can just 
put ourselves into a little bit more of a parasympathetic state where we're just literally more relaxed, which is kind of nice. So we're going to finally finish things off with a little bit of rolling in this upper back and shoulders. We spend so much time hunched over running on a keyboard, driving on our phone, that this upper back gets really stiff. So we're just going to open up this thoracic spine with two minutes of rolling. We're going to start here in three, two, one. This first minute, I'm just going to go through kind of this middle back through my shoulders and I'm going to deliberately kind of give myself a big bear hug as much as I can reach back and just roll through here. And I'm going to try to hit deliberately behind my shoulder blades a little bit. Whew. Kind of roll a little bit through on one side. Roll a little bit through on the other side. Whew. Breathe in. If you need to, you can kind of rest your butt on the ground for a second and then lift it right back up. Just doing a little time check here. 20 more seconds. Kind of roll through that middle back a little bit. Whew, this is a hard one to talk and roll at the same time. And then finally for this last minute, what we're going to play with is rolling with our arms extended overhead. So we're going to bring these arms back and hips up. We're going to keep our abs on because I want to make sure that as I open up through here, I'm actually pivoting through the thoracic spine. If my abs are off, I feel like I'm going to go back, but all this pivoting is happening through the low back and we don't want to hit that. We want to keep that low back in a nice neutral spot. And then by keeping those abs on, it really concentrates on this thoracic spine. And sometimes if the neck's a little sore, you can just kind of cradle your head here, bring your arms back over, breathe in those different spots. So good to do this. Open up our posture, makes breathing easier, makes our arm swing a little bit better, makes running whew, a whole lot better. So again, 15 minutes, we got a few different body parts in. So important to do this at least two days a week. If you feel like you're behind the eight ball with one body part, your foot, your calf, your quad or knees a little bit tight, it's good to revisit that area every day. Give it a little bit of extra love. But doing those full body scans two times a week goes so far. And shout out to all of you who are doing the Big Run training program, running that 5K with us this year. This foam rolling is gonna go so far.